Good evening and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. My name is Lynn Marquardt. I'm your host and today's date is August 15th, 2014. Happy middle of the month and welcome to the Fibercast. I'm so glad to have you with us. Today you can see I am on vacation. So we are in a remote location. You may hear some cars going by, but other than that, you may also see some birds and it's lovely out. It's probably 70 degrees if that You'll notice I'm going au naturel. I've had a busy day. I'll tell you all about it. But right now, I want to talk about Dear Jane. And specifically, we're doing another Dear Jane. What The one that I, we're going to do tonight is B12. And it's called Star Flower. So for anyone who is following along, it's this one right here. And I'm going to do it in reverse applique. And in classic fashion, I forgot half my tools, but thank goodness my mother is nearby and she was able to save the episode. And she actually has lent me her scissors. They are Ginger scissors. She has them marked with her thread. And so I have promised, as you all as my witness, I need to bring these back to her. So. What I've done so far, and then I'll tell you about my day and hear about yours. And oh, as always, Fibercast is all about all of us getting together to sew. So. so it's amazing what we can get done in 60 minutes. Pull out your project and get to it. It doesn't have to be sewing. It can be anything. Calligraphy, knitting, anything. Um, or nothing. Just sit and catch up. So what I have here is literally the square that I have taken a pencil and I have drawn the outline on it. And I know you can't see it, although let me put it way up close. Maybe you can. And I have basted around the drawing. And I've basted the dark blue on the back to it. And I actually cut out a piece of the dark blue so that I could put it in my diary book right there. So when we're done, it's going to be the reverse of this in that What's really dark here on this picture will end up being white, and then the white here will end up being this dark blue. And I just realized I did that as I was showing you, but I think it'll still be fine. So I basted it together. I've drawn it on the front, and now I'm going to take my special scissors. Again, thank you, Mom, for lending these to me. And what I'm going to do is very carefully cut in Oh, feel that breeze. It's it's beautiful down here. I hope it's beautiful where you are. I'm pulling the two pieces apart. <laughs> and the cat as it, the cat that's here was just climbing on the screen that is behind the camera. That was very cute. Okay, so I've made a little nick in this in the white, but not the blue, right? And I'm just going to very carefully cut in to this shape. Um, and I like to leave, I guess I like to leave a good quarter of an inch of turn under. I'm sure I could do less with more practice. And then at the points, it ends up being literally just a thread that you end up turning under. Oh, and speaking of which, Deb C., if you're out there, I did just see your note about looking for the Ellie Stenkowitz website, which I will send to you after this. Again, it's Ellie, E-L-L, -L, it might just be E, Stenkowitz, S-I-E-N-K-I-W-I-C-Z, or something like that. She's the one, that's who, who um, last week's patterns for the applique came from. So... I've cut the slit, I cut out a little bit of extra, and by the way, the scissors are marvelous. They're like brand new out of the box. And then, I don't know how you do it, but I literally fold it under. Oh, and that's going to be perfect. Check this out. So I'm just going to put a pin there because it's lying very nice. The fabric's doing the work for us. And then I'm going to turn the other one over. 
And then the question is, do I get it all prepared or should I sew one at a time? And I think I'm going to sew one at a time just to make sure it works. I'm going to use white thread. Oh, can you hear the kitty? So there's the first one. Get down, Garth. Down. Okay. So. That cat loves string. <laughs> For anyone who is out there who may not have heard, the, the cat's name is Garth. And I'd love to hear how many of you have cats out there. Because we know we love our pets. Well, this cat swallowed some string years ago and got it caught around the bottom of her tongue. Ended up having surgery to have it taken off. And it could it it was very dangerous. And I bet there are some of you out there who have had that same experience. Anyway, she must she must know that we're playing with string. Did you notice I'm doing it without my glasses? No wonder. I need to be able to see. Okay. So send me emails and let me know what you're doing. lmarquidot at gmail.com So it's as simple as the white is working really well. And I have to say that I am still a newbie to, to thimbles. Oh, and do I have a idea for a thimble, by the way? So I'm going to try my thimble. I want to get... Oh, someone just sent us a text. I want to get used to using the thimbles because I have a lot of hand sewing in my future. Whoops. Sorry, guys. It was connected to the cord here. Ah! So Kim, who I'm having dinner with, and the reason for us doing this a little early has just texted me, so excuse me. This is what being on vacation mode is all about. So I'm just going to answer her back, and I'll tell you about it in a minute. Sure, when will you know? We may take Jackson with us. So my husband and I were supposed to go to dinner with this high school friend of mine, Kim, and her husband. My husband's stuck in traffic, just finished a home inspection at quarter to six, so he's not going to come down. Actually, he didn't even get into traffic. He's coming down tomorrow. So, we're going to take their son with us. Great. No, Bob. Bring Jackson. Okay. So, that's that. Who's out there? Let me see since I have this open. And we're doing YouTube again, so I'll be interested to hear if it's broadcasting okay. It's opening up. Susan, Susan, hi! How are you? Has sent us a test block for the next quilt. Well, aren't you good to do a test block? That's the way to do it. If there's one thing we learned last week is slowing down and testing things really does work. It's like a, a doing a gauge, a knitting gauge or a swatch. So Susan says, this block will be for my sister-in-law. Colors are Tiffany blue, black, and taupe. Oh, she says, see you on Fibercast in a few minutes. Oh, I like that a lot. Susan, I, I hope you like that. I like that. Very nice. Wow. Carol? Hi, Carol. She says she'll do her best to get in front of the computer to watch. If she can't get, she says she'll be sure to watch at the regular time or first thing tomorrow. Well, wonderful. Hi, Carol. I hope all's well, and I hope your friend's okay. I know last week you were you were with your friend, which is important. Wonderful. Oh, and Ann, Ann Butler, thank you for the retweet. Always love that. Really appreciate that. So, what else can I tell you? I have so many things to report. And I don't know where to begin. So I just told you about dinner, so that's why we're doing this early. And let's see, since I saw you last time, I was so pleased with the block that Joyce taught me how to do. 
course, I didn't bring it with me. I brought, oh, you guys will have, I think you'll find this funny. I have, I think, nine blocks that need some hand sewing. That one you can't see. So I was probably awfully ambitious. And I have marked each back. So this is Melissa's cross. That's B11. And I just have to sew on the sides. This one is Megan's Mountain Laurel, C7. And I just have to sew on the corners. And you know what? We'll look at the others. Let's keep sewing. We'll look at the others in a minute. Oh. And I got carried away, so I'm not following my line. So I'm going to start over. Hello to Marque, if you're out there. That was a beautiful picture of you, and I don't know if it was your daughter, but it was pretty to see. I think it was her birthday. I'm liking this new method of threading my needle. I can make a, a bigger knot. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell everyone. We have made really good strides in finalizing our programs for the Marathon Quilting Guild that I'm part of. And we have an exciting lineup. And it just feels nice to have that done. It's not hard work. It's just you know a lot of coordinating and asking people if they can present and share their, their quilts with us. We have Jen Sorensen from A Quilted Jewel. She's coming in the first week of September, or the second, we do it the second Tuesday, right? But she'll be at our first meeting, so that'll be fun. We're thrilled to have her. She's from right around town, not town, around Massachusetts in the United States, and her quilts have won awards. She's been on covers of magazines, so, and she's, she was one of the founding members of the Boston Modern Guild, Modern Quilting Guild, I think I've mentioned. So it'll be interesting to hear her take on the modern quilting movement. Who knows? Maybe we can get her on Fibercast someday. She's busy, though. She's going to graduate school, working full-time. So she is busy. When you reverse appliqueing, you have to be careful to lie it flat. Otherwise, um, it won't lie flat at the end. So that's good. Hi, Cindy, if you're out there. And Yvonne. Yvonne, I heard that you watch when you're doing some production quilting, which is great. I do that, too. I set up my YouTube, and I watch Bonnie Hunter or um, Ebony Love when she was doing more of it from Love Bug Studios. And, of course, I'm always watching Jenny Doan's new tutorials. And I haven't found any others but I'd love to hear what people are watching. Can you hear the cat? You silly kitty. The screen is right behind the camera and the cat. So what I'm doing here is I'm about ready to turn the corner and I don't want it to be a rounded corner. I really want to have a very as pointy a corner as I can. So right now I'd say there is a sixteenth of an inch of fabric between where the fabric's cut and the point. And I'm literally going to use these beautiful scissors and I'm going to cut right up to within just a fiber or two and then turn it under and try to get a real good point.
and it's almost like you can't fiddle too much because then the fiber frays. Just have to be committed to it, she says as she gets a knot. Hello to Jean and, and girls out there. I really, really do hope you're not watching me on the 60-inch new smart TV. <laughs> and if you are, don't tell me. Uh, there we go. Yep, this is going to work. It's almost like you're sculpting the fabric on these points with your needle. And it could be better, but I'm going to go backwards once because I took too big of a gouge. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the sunlight for the next hour. I have to tell you, this is probably the best light I've worked in in months. And it's all natural. It's wonderful. We're getting there. So what else do I have to report? Um, I worked today and all week, as I'm sure many of you did. Um, nothing really to report, although one funny thing, where I am here has really good, has a really good wireless network, right, in one location right here and inside the house. So I'm able to get mail and do the internet thing and um, load slides up on a shared drive. And literally people around the world can look at them. I was only working with people in the United States. But, you know, I had, oh, I had someone in California. I think two people were in Texas. One person was in Boston. I was here down toward the Cape. So I loaded my slides, but then the phone network does not work well, the, the cell phone network in the house doesn't work well. So I had to load my slides in the house. Then I had to tell or ask my coworker in Texas to move the slides while I ran out to the garage outside where the dog was barking, barking mind you, with my phone on mute. And then I had to go out there and win and listen to the call and work there imagining what the slides were doing back in the house. So not ideal, but thank goodness people were prepared and I'd done my work ahead of time. So, And it was a dry run for um, a training we're doing on Tuesday. So it was, it was a dry run. You know, it wasn't the finished thing, the final thing. I'm almost done one, and I can show you that. Karen, if you're out there, we can't wait for you to get here. And I have good news, and I have, I'm missing a piece. So my sister, whom you've seen on this show before, Karen, who did the colorful rainbow paper piece quilt, that she's going to enter in the fair, by the way, um, is coming out with her family, and we're going to play all week. And remember I was talking about hexes? Well, she is going to show me how to do it. So KB, here's what I have so far. I have index cards on sale at Staples for $0.49. Cents. And I have the hexy. AccuQuilt Go cutter, and I'm psyched. I think I'm going to do just the old-fashioned grandma's quilt, but of course I've discovered some different hexy Facebook sites like Le Passion, L-E-P-A-S-S-I-O-N. I may have mentioned this last time. These are, some people are doing qu quarter-inch hexies. We're going to do these 
actually, they're one inch. They measure them across just one side, so that's a one inch hexi. It actually ends up being like one and a half inches at its widest point. So I'm ready, KB. I've got that. I've got this to put a hole in the middle of the hexi. But, and I brought the AccuQuilt, but I forgot the plastic pad that goes over this. So the good news is Bob isn't coming till tomorrow, so I'm going to ask him to bring it. So we should be fine. And we just got a text. Who's out there? Sorry, I have to get back to my message part. Joyce, hi! My tutor. I tell you, it was so helpful to have you come over and show me how you do things. I'm really, I really want to try and do things better with higher quality. Anyway, Joyce says, hi. Wherever you are, look so inviting and relaxing. She says, I'm going to use your idea on putting a fabric swatch on the DJ book block in the book. That will help with selecting colors to use for the surrounding blocks. Thank you for a great idea. Oh, good point. I need to think about that more. Um, in fact, I did want to show you my inspiration quilt. And I have not been thinking at all about my fabric placement. Remember you said it was sea glassy? And I went back and I looked at this. This is on page 46 of the book, if anyone has the book. And a lot of these are, there are even some yellows and golds in here, which I wouldn't have thought. So I probably will do that. You're right. That's good planning. I'll be able to look at what I've got and maybe change colors. Cool. I'm glad that helped. And how is Allie? Allie's doing great. We took the cone off her yesterday, and she came down with me. Um, funny story, though. So she's doing great. She's healing. She's still taking whoppers of antibiotics. For those of you who don't know, Allie, the 12-year-old lab, female lab, unspayed, had pyometra a couple of weeks ago. So she's had surgery, and she's on the mend. So now I'm just I'm just about finished this first one, and I think I've got a pretty good point on that end. This end I'm not done pointing because I need to get into this middle section. So I've just taken a snip, and just like I did before, and then I'm going to cut into every corner. I'm going to cut almost up to that very last fiber. So as soon as I finish this, I'll tell you my alley story. I, I have to tell you, I don't, I was thinking about this. So let me back up for a second. And the whole point of this little story is, Every year I get older, I have an appreciation for how much work it is to be a parent. <laughs> and here's why I say that. So yesterday, at about 3, three o'clock, no, let me back up a minute. My Jeep, again, was in the shop. Really. More computer problems. I haven't even read the paperwork yet because it's totally under warranty and they fixed it. But I will read it. So the seatbelt belt kept ringing, and it said that they had to repack the drive, the passenger side airbag, and it just kept dinging. So anyway, brought it into the Jeep dealer a couple of days ago. They gave me a loaner. Three o'clock yesterday, when I had to get on the road by four, they called and said the Jeep was ready. So I had to do the switcheroo. Now I told them by noon I was hitting the road and I was going to be away for a week and they were just going to have to work with it. But anyway, they didn't. They threatened for me to have to pay for the rental car, of course. So I went and picked up the Jeep. 
but I'd already packed the whole or I packed the whole Jeep, I put the dog in the Jeep, and as I'm driving, I'm thinking, what am I going to do with this dog? It is. It was 75. It wasn't that hot yesterday, but I was not going to leave my... You know how I don't leave dogs in cars. What was I going to do to transfer this dog from the minivan into the Jeep? The dog has just had surgery. She didn't have the cone on her, although that would have just been the, the icing on the cake. So that was my first thought. I thought, how do mothers do this? If you just have to run all of these different errands and... And you just can't leave the kids in the car. You can't. So that was my first example of really having a greater appreciation for all that you all do. And I'm impressed. And I'm going to try and be mindful the next time I think, oh, why is, why can't, you know, think about why someone, why some mother is having some trouble with her children. Anyway, that was number one. And we got through that. And we got all packed in. We get on the road, stop at McDonald's, of course, for a very healthy meal, because I haven't eaten all more all day. And Judy, if you're out there, I know you've already heard this story. But we get down to the boat, and we have to take a boat to get where I am. We lucked out. We were an hour early. I literally pulled down, pulled around, and they, they let me go right on the boat, which is just... So fun, but my dog had not been to the bathroom for several hours, and she was practically dancing in the back seat. So I got out, and by the way, you know, we were the, because we didn't have a reservation, we were one of the last ones to get on the boat. So I went and I asked, could I bring my dog back out? And they said no. So we ended up, let, let's just put it this way, I now can say, put on my resume, I have cleaned up dog pee on the boat on a ferry. I use gloves and everything. So anyway, she's doing fine. And what else? See, so I'm trying to sew this part. Joyce, I'm very jealous about your hot tub there. Hope it's as good as it sounded last week. I saw a little bit of discussion online about the Bonnie Hunter mysteries. Seems to be people are looking forward to it. Well, this is this is pretty tricky. I'm not getting a nice curve like I would like. What are you all working on tonight? I bet most people are out at barbecues and enjoying this August night. Speaking of which, Sarah, if you're out there, we had a nice time last Sunday night. Thanks for the invitation. Sarah, a fellow quilter, of, invited Bob and me and she, her husband, and we went just down to a local spot and had a nice, nice meal. They're lucky they can walk there from where they live. Isn't that nice? I have a co-worker who lives out in Livermore, California. She's an avid knitter. She's very talented. She could do she can do anything. And they are doing one of those yarn beautifications where they're literally down the streets of Livermore. And this is where Lawrence Livermore Labs are, right in, in Silicon Valley. They're they've all been assigned a tree and they're all going to put they're going to knit up around the tree. So she has her tree picked out. She actually measured it. So Andy, if you're out there, Keep showing us the progress. She's got about this much. She's literally 
going to sew it like the tree. I guess it has a little bit of a curve. And um, so why did I mention that? Does anyone know? <laughs> there was something that triggered me talking about that. Sarah? Sarah does a lot of projects. <laughs> We are getting there. Okay. Okay, so we're three quarters of the way done. Can you see that? Ugh, could not do this without these nice scissors. Oh, and I also have another pair of scissors, too. If we needed a bigger pair, I also got Mom's good ones. KB, I have them. Oops. So after work tonight, we went over to the... Hmm... Linda and Gaston's, and I'm sorry I cannot say your last name yet, Valdez maybe, and friends of the family, actually family, their daughter's married to my cousin, and they have just moved over from Budapest and have unpacked, and turns out they've got a lovely new apartment, um, or condo like living, and they had an extra bed mattress a top mattress. So after work, we went over and picked that up and put it right in the back of the truck. And I have to tell you, you know, this whole camping thing with a night like tonight, you could just sleep on it right out there in the under the stars till the bugs came. Okay. So, not perfect, but not too bad. So I'm going to end my, my thread here. Well, no. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run it underneath. Why not? Okay. So now I'm going to do another one. We're getting there. So same type of thing. I pull my, my pieces apart. And I make a little nick so I can get the piece of my scissor in there. Then I'm going to, just like the four, so I've made the slit. Now I'm going to cut off about an eighth of an inch around each one. So, back to hexes for a minute. Because I mentioned I was going to be doing a lot of hand sewing, and Karen and I are going to try a grandmother's, or a hexy quilt. I happened upon that Le Passion quilt, and some people are making half-inch hexi squares. Some people are doing quarter-inch, literally, so they'll have a handful of the little flowers that they're making. It's really, it's either amazing or it's cuckoo. <laughs> but that's not for us to judge. Huh. Oh! So when we went over to get the mattress from Linda and Gaston, Gaston, they gifted us two things, and I wanted to show you. Hmm. 
One was a book on batik. It's the heaviest darn book. And it's by Inger McCabe Elliott. And they knew her. And actually, I'm, I'm assuming it's an Inger, uh, her. I believe it is. And I'm going to look through it and share with people, anyone who wants it, wants to look at it. I'm sure there's a lot of history here. And so that was very kind. They, they've downsized, and so they didn't have any room for it. And so I'm going to take a look at it and probably similarly pass it on. But boy, that's going to be fun to look at. So that was one thing. And then, and I don't know much about batik other than my aunt and my mother have done it with the wax. Uh, and certainly, isn't that what they do? Um, well, all of our batiks are made with wax and then you put dye, put wax, overlay more dye, and then the wax prevents that dye from getting to that spot. <laughs> yeah, just like that. What does it say here? Batik head cloths. Cerebon, about 80 years ago. Yeah. This looks very detailed. Oh, that's cool. Here we go. So here they are dipping the plates in wax. The plates are probably made from wood, I'm guessing, or maybe metal. Dipping them in wax and then stamping them onto the fabric, and then they'll over dye it. Well, I won't read that in front of you, but I'm excited about that. That was that was nice. I think I just moved the whole table. And then, this was made by a quilter. It's a piece of art made by Karen McCarthy. She's literally sewn fabric to create the, the collage. And on the back, it was done by Karen McCarthy. So if you're out there in Arlington, Massachusetts, hello. I have a piece of your art. It's going on my Simply Colorful Fiber Studio wall. And this was done. It's paper, starch, paste, imitation gold leaf, colored pencil, and thread. And it was done in 1993. I don't know if you can see the glare. I'm sorry about the glare, but it's really, really nice. Lima, I think you would appreciate this. In fact, this will go near your the collage of your cards. So, how's that for a nice holiday surprise gifts? putting it down on the table to make sure it lies flat. And I guess I should do try to speed up a little bit for the sake of the camera. It must be like watching paint dry. But I have to tell you it's lovely out here. Perfect sleeping weather. Okay, I like how this point's ending. So I literally am going to, again, using the, yep, the thread to almost sculpt the fibers of the fabric, I pulled it back to create that point. And then I'm just going to tie it down really fast. Clip it. And I actually, no, I threaded more than one needle, but I didn't thread more than one in white, and that's what we're using. Silly me, I thought we'd get to all sorts of these in one hour. Okay. 
So next week, we're also going to be broadcasting from afar. And I love that we get to see each other every Friday night. Thank you again for joining me um, in joining each other. I hope you're all talking amongst yourselves. We're going to have to think of something creative because there are fireworks next Friday. So whether, let me know if this time works for you, if you'd prefer me to do it live another night, although I hate to leave Fridays because we're kind of all, I know I remember when it's Friday. <laughs> we're all trained, right? tell you sometime not in the too distant future we're going to have chips in us with little dingers to tell us where and when to be. I got an email from my boss asking if I could attend a meeting next Thursday like two in the afternoon. Now I'm on vacation mind you but sure I'll do it. My biggest fear is that I'll get so wrapped up in the fair or whatever's going on I'll, m I'll miss it. So that would be a use case for an alarm clock in my head. Or if I were really good, I would set my my phone, I guess. Let me finish this one and then I'll see who's out there. Love to hear what you're working on. Again, send me email at lmarquedant at gmail.com or you can always go to simplycolorful.com we have a Facebook and now we're doing this on YouTube which is kind of exciting it's very exciting actually because the last thing I want is for it to be hard for you to find me <laughs> I can't believe I just uttered those words <sighs> Alrighty. I think you're going to like that. Choice, I think it might pass quality control. So two down and the middle down. Well, it'll be interesting to end Fibercast. Not that we're ending anytime soon. We still have 15 good minutes when it's still light out. At least here in Australia it's really early, isn't it? Hi Peggy if you're out there and everyone else in Australia. Hi Anne up in Canada. Sandra, hi. Joan, our many Joyce's, Joyce Long, Kelsey, hi. Kelsey, you were so funny. You sounded so busy. It was great. Kelsey's one of our long armors, as you all know. So, okay, so I did the same thing, right? I just cut that out. But again, I want to get very close to this last couple of threads in the corner and really. You know, in a perfect world, there there'd be like one thread between these two. I'm nowhere near that, but that's what I'm trying to get to. So it almost looks like you drew it in a continuous spiral, like that drawing game we used to have. Of course, if my mother would come in front of the camera, I could ask her in person what that game was. It was something spirograph, I think, where you had this area and then you had these little things that were like um, plastic round gears and you'd put it in the center and there were gears around the big part and you'd put your, your, uh, your pen in the little one and you'd go around like this and it would end up making spirals. Anyway, anyway. 
This is why we like to have guests. We are cruising. <laughs> there we go. So we just finished another side and we'll turn this around. And you really can finger press it, you know. When you're using good fabric, that I find that that's usually I'm trying to get as much of a point as I can there. Here we go. Oh, so the thimble. Remember I said I had another idea for the thimble. My mind is everywhere, I tell you. I'm in vacation mode. Um, so I'm trying to get to use a thimble, and of course I've forgotten to keep using it, so let me put it back on. Everyone familiar with the ALS or Lou Gehrig's ice bucket challenge that we've been seeing? And every, I could shout out lots of people who I've seen do it, and it's so wonderful. And it certainly has served its purpose. It's brought attention to a terribly debilitating disease. And... I was challenged by Sarah, so, and I still have at least 12 hours, so I can do this tomorrow. Let's just say that in the challenge, I will be using a thimble. And that's all I'll tell you until you see it posted. And let's just say I'm not too worried about the chill effect. <laughs> so do you like my shirt? As I'm looking down to, wouldn't that be a good, good fabric for a quilt? Someday. And we are on to the very last one. So we've done three. I'm just going to pull it apart. And again, this is B12 Starflower. I did see a woman. Remember I was saying that once you do the square once, you can do the second one much probably faster, better. I saw one woman She's making two of every block, and she's making both her son and her daughter a Dear Jane quilt. And it's kind of, it's probably very interesting for her. The one for her son is made with blacks and then colors that are popping, and the one for her daughter is whites. But that was a creative idea. Okay, so I just, oh, and I'm going to trim it just a little bit. How is everyone's gardens doing? I bet you're harvesting up a storm. Okay. 
Ooh, and I'm just going to start a new thread. Dear Jane is a cool project because you can bring it anywhere. Like the hexes. I'm kind of curious to see if, if the hexes become boring. I'll be very frank. And if they do, I am not going to make myself do a whole big quilt. But my sister's going to show me how to do it. She did a stocking a few months ago. In fact, we talked to Karen today. Karen, that was quite a story about your neighbor. I'm sorry to hear that. The moral of this, the story I'm about to tell you is when you're transporting flowers, you know, like flower bouquets, and I am so guilty of this. I am not one to, to batten that down anything, but you really need to batten it down and put it in either a carton or put the seatbelt on it or somehow secure it. Her neighbor was carting a bouquet of flowers and it's and it was in the front passenger seat, if I understand the story correctly, and it fell over. And so she went to pick up the the flowers, of course, and the car went where it wasn't supposed to go. She's okay now, I guess, but it was an accident. And it can happen so fast. That's the thing. Yesterday when I was driving down here, there was a woman texting behind me. And it was literally when I got off the, the in Milford, of all places, to get my McDonald's. And I had to move over, and there was plenty of room, but she was looking down, and I startled her. Of course, I was looking at her in the rearview mirror, and I was ready to speed up so that she didn't hit me. Granted, I was cutting in front of her, but still, there was plenty of room. She hadn't been texting. It's just so easy to get distracted was the point of that story. We are so close, and I am really happy with this. Okay, so we have one more. Almost looks like oars or something. Definitely a way. I love the stories hearing people say that they're watching in their studio while they're quilting. It's just amazing what we can get done when we really just put our mind to it. And I love seeing pictures of where people sew. Almost turning. Trying to get a point. It's not. Who else haven't I talked to in a long time? If I didn't give you a shout out, send me an email, remind me. Becca, hope you're doing well. I love to see your garden, your strawberries there. And we're coming around the bend. 
So tonight has just been all about doing Dear Jane on vacation. And as always, I just am so glad you were able to join me. I hope that you enjoyed yourself, got something done, or just thought about what you wanted to do, thought about color, thought about something fiber, fiberlicious. And keep sending in those tips. I love it when you all send in ideas and tips. Like last week, yes, I probably could have done that. Paper piecing was someone's comment. There's definitely different ways to do the same thing. So keep keep replying, keep sharing. Next week, who knows? Maybe we'll we'll be dear Janeing it or maybe we'll be hexing it. Not sure where we'll be, but um, with any luck, it'll be two of us if I can talk my sister into doing it with me. If you want to see Karen, do a shout out. We'll do a letter campaign. Tell her we want Karen on Fibercast. <laughs> Either that or I'll pay her. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, so. There we go. That is officially block B12 Starflower. So thank you everyone for joining. That was another episode of Fibercast. On behalf of me and my team. Oh, that's right. That's me. Thanks for joining. Have a great weekend. Have a great week next week, and we'll see you next Friday. Bye.